Uh, would you also talk a little bit about the thinking that went into the title of your book, Unexpected Destinations? In many ways, you've come a long way from where you started, which was a conservative, evangelical, suburban, middle-class, white family. Mm -hmm. So in what ways does this origin contrast starkly with your destination, and how was it unexpected for you? Well, I think my life has really been filled with um, ending up in places I never would have imagined. And I think that's come basically uh, from trying to keep asking the question, uh, what about Jesus? Mm -hmm. What does it mean uh, to follow Jesus? Uh, and the, the thing that my background gave me was a, a sense that uh, uh, the relationship of one to be a follower and disciple of Jesus uh, it determines, should determine everything in one's life. Mm -hmm. And that's what that, that conservative evangelical background uh, kind of put into my DNA. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it, it led me to places that were often very much against the, the subculture uh, that, mm -hmm. that I was raised in, and beginning with things like the Vietnam War and my work with Mark Hatfield. Uh, it was a highly unpopular position at that point for any evangelicals to question uh, the morality of our involvement in Vietnam. Okay. And, uh, and um, you know, on that, that put me in a place I, I certainly a destination I never would have expected. Mm -hmm. My my uh, my then journey uh, with Church of the Savior in Washington D.C. introduced me to uh, ways of deepening one's relationship to God, uh, particularly through uh, the tradition of Catholic contemplative spirituality. I ended up at a monastery for about, mm. uh, at one point living there for about five six weeks mm -hmm. and. It, and um, a, a place that would have been unimaginable from when I started, but yet right. it was out of it was out of that same quest. Uh, how do you ground your life in God's love? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and 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 likewise, um, when I went to the World Council of Churches, it was um, something that I never could have imagined, but but came through. Uh, you know, another set of, of, of really unpredictable circumstances, which when you look back on it, I think you have to say, well, this, this is simply the work of grace in, in one's life that really is beyond you. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, you know, there isn't, there isn't any plan that you could have figured out and yeah. charted. It's, uh, it's more than that. And finally, in coming to the RCA, um, I mean, I... Uh, I didn't even know what the Reformed Church of America was until I went to Hope College, and even then I didn't know the difference between it and the Christian Reformed Church. Mm -hmm. And and um, it it was highly unlikely that I ever would have ended up in a position of uh, of leading a you know a mainline denomination like the RCA. Yeah. But you know, in in retrospect, it seems like the other parts of my journey prepared me perfectly for. For that task, and that's how, I, mm -hmm. how, how I've experienced it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure it's amazing to look back now and think through that whole process mm -hmm. and to see God's hand in it. Mm -hmm. It really is.